So most hikers and backpackers know about the Appalachian Trail. And a lot of hikers and backpackers know about the Florida Trail just because it's a wild trail. But some of you might know about a trail that almost connects both of those, and that is the Penhody Trail. So hey guys, I'm with my buddy, my good Alabama buddy back there, Crow, and we are doing one of his favorite sections of that trail. And I've got some new gear that I'm gonna be testing today. And I wanted to bring you guys along and show you that new gear. You saw our video, a few videos back of me showing my new stuff for 2024. But there's a couple things that I didn't show in today's video. I'm gonna show them and I'm also gonna set up my new Z-Pax 10. So guys, let's get on this trail. We're a few miles in. We got a beautiful water shelter we're going over right now. Watershed, not shelter. We just crossed the shelter. I'm not gonna butcher that name. But uh, we are great, a good ways into this hike already and the temperature feels great, the weather's perfect. And uh, let's see what we're up to. mile section we're doing goes from the bottom of Duggar Mountain to Chiaha or I think he's think Crow said Highway 20 um, so far it's been well maintained and uh, we are just cruising I think we're about four three or four miles in now but uh very pretty very quiet but yeah so far it's a great section of trail I see why he likes it so much and it's just cool to be on the Penhody as it is on any of these major trails So we have found us a spot. How many miles are we in? Six and a half? Six and a half. So about six and a half miles. Um, that's gonna give us a big day tomorrow. But today is gonna be more about camping. Tomorrow will be more about high miles. So uh, we found a nice spot by this creek I just showed you. And uh, this guy who is a uh, Z-Pax Plex Solo expert <laughs> is gonna show me his setup first and then we're gonna set mine up and see uh, how bad we can set it up for our first go at it because I'm pulling a rookie move. I've never set this tent up, so. What? <laughs> so we're gonna set his up, he's gonna give me the tour, and then we'll do mine. All right, so the first little upgrade I have made, and I love my buddy Ben, I love his steak bags, but what I don't like about this Seed Packs tent that I'm, I think I'm gonna love, but is that I have to carry up to 10 steaks. And the thing is, I have to drive all of these into this steak bag, and it can be a pain in the butt to get them all in there. Yes, it can be done, but it's just a little bit aggravating. Well. I found another cool piece of gear on Garage Grown Gear by a guy out in, uh, or up in New York, uh, and it's called All Man's Right. And he has this steak bag with a cool little engineering setup to it where it has a wide mouth on it where I can drop all 10 steaks in there easily, as you just seen. Got to pinch it shut and all of my steaks are ready to go. I thought this was a cool thing I picked up on Garage Grown Gear and I just wanted to share it with you guys. So for first try, it isn't perfect, it isn't the most ideal, but it's a start. Definitely need to get in there and play with the bathtub a little bit and kind of tune it. Um, I was thinking about my buddy Dave and he was talking about those guys in there too and whether he was going to keep her or not, but I see that in there and need to be, have adjustment. CPAC's left me a little bit of frayed rope in there too to clean out. But anyways, definitely on a little bit of a slant going on one corner so it's throwing off stuff, but this is for a first try, I feel like we're somewhere to start and you can also tell that my Tyvek is not correct that's because it's for my X-Med I have not bought one for this tent yet I just wanted to see what I needed to do to cut it down so yeah that's why it's a little bit much under there I have it folded up but I've got all 10 stakes on there all my guys set up that's a first setup and the Dyneema needs to stretch a little bit too but I go ahead and put my gear in there like Crow was talking about and help stretch that tub out so 
that is uh, my home for the night. All right, we've been hanging out and it's just about to start getting dark. And I just remembered I brought a fire starter. So that is gonna make life a little easier. And uh, enjoy some nice fire here. We brought the silky out. Got some firewood ready to go. It's a little bit wet, but definitely got a dry core, so it should be good. But yeah, I got some uh, first night Chick-fil-A waiting on me after, but I'm gonna go ahead and get a fire started now. <laughs> Call this the dinner of champions on first night. <sighs> Seventeen. That'll be fun. It ain't gonna be too too tough. Oh uh, no. We'll probably be be there. You know, more dark because it's uh, it's not. It's, it's not gonna be tough like it. Well, good morning. We have uh, packed up. Crow is one of the slowest packer uppers there is. <laughs> uh, he had to pack up and then unpack again because he dropped the contact. So uh, we're getting set up and getting ready to go. It has become very, very cold this morning. Um, but yeah, so we're ready to get on trail and get moving. The tent did awesome. Actually, very minimum condensation this morning too. And uh, we hit some rain that lasted probably a couple of hours in the middle of the night, which we were expecting to get some. More than what we expected, but it definitely knew we were gonna get some. But anyways, it's day two now. We're ready to hit the trail. We got a big day ahead of us and uh, Crow's gonna show us what's ahead. So another piece of gear I'm trying out on this trip is this Appalachian Gear Alpaca hoodie. And uh, on the previous video I did, a couple videos back, I had multiple comments talking about they were worried about the breathability, or one person I think said they had it and didn't find it real breathable. Well, this is one of the ways I was gonna test this one today, and I definitely say it's not the breathability of like a, like a fleece, kind of like a Patagonia R1 or maybe a Melly. But at the same time, I'm almost three miles in or between two and three miles and it breathes pretty well to be honest with you. I definitely can feel it a little bit thicker, but not enough that I'm like, I can't sweat in this. And uh, I'm enjoying it. It feels really good. The material's really soft. And uh, with this light breeze we got going on, it's probably in the low 40s right now. It feels pretty comfortable. All right, we are about seven miles in for the day. Uh, we have made it to Laurel Shelter. It's a pretty sweet setup right here on the Penhody. Um, just gonna take a nice little break here and hanging out for a minute. And I don't know what Crow's doing over there. He's just playing with random stuff. But anyways, we're just gonna chill for a minute and keep on going. All right, 
we just took a break at Pine Glen Campground, and it is one of these very rural campgrounds, very uh, backcountry campgrounds. But anyways, we got a little bit of fuel to recharge, I think. What did you say, 5.9 miles? 5.9 to the shelter, yeah. Okay, so that is where we're headed for the night, and I'm already thinking about dinner, even though I just had a big snack. Absolutely. <laughs> it's gonna be a cold night, so I'm about to fatten up for sure. So anyways, we're headed on. All right, guys, we have made it to Lower Shoal Shelter. I think Crow has never been happier in his life. <laughs> Our uh, toes are a little tingly right now. So yeah, we got a beautiful split creek view behind us right here and then the shelter. And we're excited to be at camp finally. And uh, I am hungry, so I'm about to be eating soon. So another new piece of titanium gear I'm trying out is this Soto 750 milliliter pot. And as you notice, it has no handle on it. But this is where the nice benefit over my Tokes pot is it comes with this toggle or clamp there. So when I've already boiled water, I can literally go like this, pick it up, and not worry about burning my fingers or having to grab something to hold it with while I'm trying to pour it. So it's just as light as the Tokes, but has a more convenient way of grabbing it while it's boiling hot. already a mile in this morning got up about five crow went to bed like a really old man like four o'clock <laughs> but I ain't gonna lie I was soon after I had me a little fire for a little bit but uh we want to get on trail early I get on home to Rachel and the baby but we're up here what's this road highway 20 mm. no dirt road mm, it's a know. it's a dirt road we'll just call it that and uh, we're about to cross over and we got a little Probably a little over six and a half miles left to the car, but uh, very pretty morning, very cold. It was very cold last night, probably high 20s right now. But uh, we're gonna venture on out of here, and Crow says we got a couple of views left, and head on to the truck. Crow said there was one awesome last single camp spot spot as we're coming off the trail within a couple miles. But look at this nice sea here and look at this view. Wow. Can't beat that at all. A little fire pit and a perfect chair, an easy spot for camp. I gotta come back here. <laughs> awesome. Well guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up right here. Um, thank you for watching and thank you for checking out some of my new gear with me and seeing my first time on trail with it. Um, definitely a quick fan of the Plex Solo and uh, definitely gonna be using it a lot more this year. Got a couple big trips that it's gonna be great for. And I uh, just wanna thanks, say thanks to you, Crow, if you're coming up here. This is an awesome section of the trail. He wanted me to show his favorite part of the Penhody Trail, and I had a blast. Just say thanks again, man. Really enjoyed it. Sure, buddy. That was fun. And uh, that's the end of this. Again, thank you. If you've got any comments, if you've got any questions about the new gear I bought, and I appreciate you watching. See ya.